<laughs> it's just his body. All right. So segment one. James Storm and Wildcat Chris Harris versus Mortimer Plumtrees, the Johnsons. I don't know who gave him the money, but Storm enters with straight up pyro guns this week. <laughs> they're not like little spoot cappers, like pew, 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 pew. They, yeah. like, they're rigged to the in-house pyros. It's getting over big. So Mortimer Plumtree enters and shows us all that he is completely insane. <laughs> Did you understand this promo at all that he cut? No, because I was too busy trying to listen to the music. Oh, were you? <laughs> yes. But whatever. Because I think it changed again. But it's still the same concept of we're just going to put like six audios over each other. Like there's like this weird like where like they morph into each other too. And it, it's I have uh, it sounded like a police dispatch radio, the inside of a hive of bees bad rock music, someone yelling, and dark, ominous sounds all at once. <laughs> That's all the sounds I heard. To the inside of a beehive? Yes! <laughs> Uh, I mean, that's probably right. That's probably right. Like I said, I was focused on the promo because it didn't make any sense, and even the parts that did were insane. <laughs> what did he say? He says, the stars are shining bright, the planets are in alignment, and tonight a thousand events culminate in this very moment. And that's the part that made sense. Yeah. <laughs> then he gets, it is not the one for need. It is not the one need for wants. He is a God-given divine right. And my servants, Richard and Rod, step into this ring, do my bidding, claim my crown, and gild me in gold. Dear, harsh, and kind people, I give to you my NWA World Tag Team Champions, the Johnsons. Wrong with this man? I don't know what's wrong with him. None of that even makes any sense. Wait, so he was like writing a story with his whole stars shining bright, planets alignments, and then started like quoting scriptures with it's not the one for need and heed and want and God. And yeah. then he's like, I'm just going to get gold now because this is for like the tournament, right? They're moving on for the NWA titles. Right. Yeah. What the hell? It's yeah. And what is he? He's just some rich kid. Who probably who owns his bullies, but he's talking like this for some reason now out of nowhere. I, I don't understand what yeah. he wants to do with his life. No, I don't get it either. I don't get it either. So commentary talks about how Storm and Harris were thrown together last week with no experience as a tag team and won. The match starts. Storm gets tossed around, coming back once or twice, but not making the tag. Literally walks towards Harris at one point and stops himself. The Johnsons tag in and out, doing mostly big tosses, flapjacks, and the like. Same stuff from last week. Nothing new. This is, this is typical, I'm just going to put myself over style commentary because it doesn't really do anything for anyone. Ed says Mortimer Plumtree hasn't called his mother in 15 years because she tucks him into bed every night, and that's when they catch up. Yeah, it's whatever he wants to do. <laughs> Harris gets the mild tag because it's broken down almost immediately. Ed says, now I see what everyone was talking about. The Johnsons really work stiff. He got it in. I was waiting for it. Yeah. I really didn't think for a second they weren't going to do it. I was like, I, okay, I, they're just commentating normally. This is different. Right. And they snuck it in. I was like, okay, there it is. Whatever. So Harris goes for a crossbody. He's caught, but Storm hits a missile drop kick and knocks them down for the pin and the three, and the crowd erupts as James Storm and Wildcat Chris Harris advance in the tag team tournament. But their music stops to focus on Mortimer in the ring. So post-match, Mortimer pushes the Johnsons around and yells at them. One of them picks Mortimer up for a choke slam, but puts him down and then pushes him to the ground and leaves. <laughs> so badly done. Right, and then, and then the other one follows him. I don't know what they were supposed to do there. I, I feel like they did it wrong, though. Yeah, that's what it felt like to me. It felt like something went wrong, but I don't know what. Uh, so Mortimer pleads that they can be friends and limps after them. We cut to the dancing girls, and Tanae reminds us that Shamrock versus Malice will still happen tonight. Yeah. 
Match length, four minutes and 42 seconds. Segment length, eight minutes and 20 seconds. Oh, I didn't write down how long the post-match segment was. Probably not more than two minutes. Y- yeah, your thoughts? Uh, I thought it was one of the better matches in TNA, finally. Really? Yeah. The Johnsons did what they do. They came out, did all their muscle work, proving that they were the bigger men. The other two had to be quick, out-wrestle them. That's what they did until they got the heat drawn on them, got the hot tag. It's all simple, basic storytelling, but it all worked, and everyone got over with what they needed to get over, especially at the end when they broke up from Mortable or so Mortable, whatever his name is. Say his name for me. Mortimer Plumtree. Especially for Mo- Mortable, especially for Plumtree. Yep. I can't say that first one. That's all right. No, but I really enjoyed it. I think it worked. That's all right. Good. Because I, I kind of didn't. Like, my whole feelings were like, I don't, I, I don't understand who would ever get any sort of a rub from the Johnsons. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, like, it seems like the only, the, honestly, the only people who it seems like would get the rub from this are the Johnsons. And that seems like it would blow up in your face. Well, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that, damn it. How was I worked on that joke? No. <laughs> Threw it together while I was drunk, just like Ferrara did. Also, the most important thing about this match. You ready for this? Yeah, please. This is the last time we see the Johnsons wrestle. <laughs> yeah, so what happened with the Johnsons? Why did they break up from Mortimer Plumtree? I can't wait to find out. Say their piece. Maybe they won't have a match that culminates from it. They might come back and be like, this is why we hate him. But after that, it's goodbye forever. So segment two, Jeremy Borash introduces...